Now we will start working with 2D arrays. In this example, then, we're going to write a program to read and display a 3x3 three three matrix, which is a two-dimensional array in C. Let's go ahead and define rows as three, columns, so calls is three. All right, so we'll now create a 2D array. Oh, so let's keep working with int. Right. int. Let's see. Oh, let's call this array once more. All right, but now rows comes first. C is row major order. Columns. Uh, there we go. Columns next. All right, so now we have a three by three array. It's empty. So to read and display, so by reading, I, what I actually mean is let's read information from the keyboard and store it in the array. Let's declare a couple of variables, i and j. And so to iterate through the array, we're going to use nested for loops. So while actually, let's maybe use r and c for row and column. That might make a little more sense. Even though most examples you see i and j, r equals zero are less than rows, right, plus plus, are, my right, inner for loop then to go through the column, c equals zero, c less than columns, right, increment c here, and now what we'll do is we'll just say, hmm, turn out a message, enter, Array, let's use a percent D. Another percent D, so we can actually then show the value here. So I need to then have R and C to substitute in there. And now scan F. Right now, to read this in, it's an integer data type percent %d. I, I give it the address of array at index r and index c. Right. And if I want to print that out afterwards, I could actually print it within. Let's print it out afterwards. It's going to be the same thing, basically, except like, If I just print out the value, right, RC. Now it's going to be a little messy and we're going to want to clean that up. All right, let's see what compile errors I might have made. All right, looks like we're okay. Let's just go ahead and run this. So now it prompts me to enter, write the value for array at index zero, zero. All right, so it's an integer. I can enter anything I want. We'll just give it a one, give it a two, a three. See how the column's increasing? So that's the J loop. The J is increasing here. We're in here, sorry, J. I'm using C. This is the C, All right, here. R stayed the same until we loop back up. We'll run through the debugger. Right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, so when it prints it out, right, it printed it out all in one line. Small array, it didn't look too bad, but I could probably format it a little more nicely. What I want to do is let's just print out row by row. So we're going to say start next row on a new line. So you can use print out for the backslash n, or I can just use puts with an empty string here. But 
So let's watch us iterate through this. All right. Run the cursor. So we're ready to come into our loop. All right, we're going to set r equal to 0. So r is equal to 0. 0 is less than the number of rows. So we're going to now set c equal to 0. c at 0 is less than the number of columns. So now we'll print it out, right, array at index 0, 0. And scanf is sitting here waiting. So this is where if I type in, so I have to hit next line. Now I can type in my 1, hit my enter key. We're back up here. So notice we come back up to this loop. We're going to increment C. C became 1. C was less than columns. 1 was less than 3. So we're back down here now. Perform this next step again, right, which is to enter the next number here. Right. And now we can go back here. We're back up here. We incremented C to 2. 2 was less than 3. So we're going to do the same thing. So yeah, we're going through the columns here. Right, 3. Now, when we increment C, C will be 3. 3 won't be less than 3, so we'll go back up and increment R. Right, so we're back up here now. This increments R to 1. R is less than the number of rows. 1 is less than 3. So we're going to come back in now and go through all the columns. C becomes 0 again. All right, so now we're going to enter array at index 1. So row 1, column 0. Right, just typing in the number 4. Next line. All right, C becomes 1. We're just going to we're at row 1, column 1. All right. All right. As we keep stepping through here, we're going to be at row 1, column 2. There's 1, 2. Right. I'll enter 6. All right. Now, this will increment to 3, be false. We're going to go back up, increment R to 2. 2 is still less than the total number of rows. So we start C back at 0 all over again at right. this inner loop. So row 2. Index 0, 7, I have to hit next line here so we can see this happening, right? Row 2, column 1, here's my 8, finally we'll increment C one more time, we'll get row 2, column 2, so I put the 9, now C will become 3, all right, so we come back up here, we increment R, R will become 3, that will be less than row, so now we come down here and print everything out. And let's just do a run the cursor so we can see the output. Pop this up. All right. So now I've got the output. I've got each row separated. Simply because when I finish going through the columns within this loop, so the R loop here is controlling the rows. C is the columns. I just write a blank line. All right. Now, we could do something to format that, make it a little bit nicer. Right. Maybe I just want to use a feel with them. A five for that. If I run it again, I'm going to have to input all those numbers again, which isn't much fun when you're testing this. Right. And maybe I want to have a couple of blank lines before we see the start. I could do that there. Right. And maybe I just want to print out the row number when we start. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's print out. Right, we're going to say row percent. Oh, let's go with 2D. And let's see what that looks like. Right, now, rather than have to enter all of these all the time, I'm temporarily going to just comment this out. Let's just fill our array with random numbers. R and C. Let's call Rand. And I'm going to get some number in the right. I'm going to get a really big number. So potentially, let's just make this maybe eight to give us a little more room. Either that or we could limit the numbers that we run through here. Let's build and run. And yeah, that's kind of ugly, isn't it? All right, so what I forget to do, I forgot to print out my row number. And it gave me a warning that I chose to ignore because I just did a build and run. So yeah, we need to print out R there. Clean that up. All 
All right, there's my row. All right, now I know what row I'm in. If we put column headings up above this, right, would that be nice to put in some column headings? So that's probably a header we need to do before we even come in here and start running this. Oh. All right, so I've got row percent 2D. So if you think about ROW, right, and then I'm going to use two, right, then I'm using eight for my other. So if I were to say now percent eight, I'm going to have this right justified. That won't look too nice. Percent 8D, percent 8D, backslash in. And now if I were to print out zero, one and two for the columns numbers right Let's see what we get not going to be lined up very nicely right simply because of that right and then how much oh i left a space after the 2d there as well so i didn't account for that space Sort of centered, not quite. All right, I might want to leave something else above that. Still running. All right, so it was a little bit of guessing on my part. Would have been a little more scientific to count everything. All right, so I probably want to move column over. So, what I did here with the percent S string is I said, well, just substitute one space into there and use 12 spaces to do it. All right, so if I wanted to move that over a couple more, I could actually maybe make that 15. Right. I wanted to try to have some sort of label up there for the column. Right. I'm not going to spend much more time on this. Right. Trying to give you something, a little bit of a reminder about what were columns and what were rows to let the user know. Here are my columns, 0, 1, and 2. Here are my rows, 0, 1, and 2. And here are the numbers that are stored there could be formatted a little more nicely. Hopefully it gives you the general idea once again of what are rows and what are columns. All right, so our problem, right, originally was to write a program to read in values and display a three by three matrix. We did that, I simply went to actually commenting that out using random numbers so I could work on the formatting a little bit. If we were to uncomment that, we could go back to our original program. But that was to give you some experience now working with random numbers. And notice it says implicit declaration of RAND because did I go up and re-include standard library.h? No. So worried about my spacing for my ugly output. But it didn't do that. All right, so if we compile, now that warning's gone, All right, we'd still get the same behavior, build and run. But we should heed those warnings, right? We shouldn't leave things out. All right, we just got lucky that everything worked. All right, that's the end of this example. Thanks for tuning in.